Because when you talk to people, they say, what are you fooling around with those things for? Silent films were jerky, ludicrously acted, badly photographed. They're just curiosities. <laughs> and particularly irritating to me was the badly photographed, because that you could not hold against them. Right from Lumiere, they looked absolutely superb in their original prints. And it was the laboratories not caring, thinking, ah, it's an old film, what can you do with it? That ravaged them and made them look so hideous. When talkies came in, producers were very anxious that there should be talkies and only talkies in the future. And there was a great number of people who loved silent films. And some of them started making one reel shorts with hokey commentaries, honky tonk music, speeded up image, and using the very earliest, most primitive films. And some of them were very funny, I hate to admit. And a generation was brainwashed into thinking that was what silent films were like. And they went on being shown well into the 40s and 50s at news theatres in England. We always used to see these wretched things. Um, and it's ironic that some films only survived because they were chopped down to 15 minutes. I can't think, actually, of a big American director who didn't work in the silent days or, or wasn't brought up in the silent days. So you could, you could meet any of them and... and when they came to England, I used to get in touch with them, even Richard Thorpe, who turned up to have a great reverence for D.W. Griffith, for whom he'd been an extra. Um, Andrew Stone turned out to be a film collector, mad about Norma Talmadge, had been making pictures in the silent days. Um, but people like Hitchcock and, and Weiler and all those were silent film makers. Alfred Hitchcock was asked for his ten favorite films of all time, and nine of them were silence. 